Hey, good Wednesday morning, Wednesday morning, and uh, yesterday afternoon turned out to be a beautiful, beautiful day. Sun came out and uh, it warmed up. It felt really nice. And again, it's just a, a foretaste of what is to come. Yeah, spring is around the corner. Matter of fact, this weekend, spring officially begins here in the United States. So I hope you're able to get out today. I think the temperature is going to be a little bit warmer today. So make sure you get out today and enjoy some of the sun. Soak in some of that vitamin D. So today I want to talk about Christians. Christians. Followers of Jesus. Little Jesus. Little Christ, as some scholars would say. That's what Christian means. And there are folks who don't attend church and they've been reaching out to me, asking me questions about the faith. And, and I, I love it. I mean, I think it's a wonderful thing. But one of the questions that was brought up to me was, why are Christians so negative towards one another? When they disagree on Scripture, why do they have to be so hateful? When they disagree on baptism, why do they have to be so hateful towards others that disagree with them? When they disagree with matters of the Bible, why do they have to be so hateful? This came from a person that, um, that doesn't attend church. They walked away from church years ago because they got tired of all the hatefulness. If you disagreed with somebody in, in, in that church, then guess what? Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. Um, that those folks were treated pretty uh, poorly, so they walked away. Rocky just came to say hello to me and to say hello to everybody else. So today I want to talk about how did how did the early church how did they handle whenever somebody would come and whenever they disagreed. Rocky just yawned, so yeah, apparently this 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 devotion is pretty exciting. Um, but but how did they how did they handle whenever folks had different beliefs than what they did, you know? So back in 2009, a group of us we were able to go to the Middle East, and our last trip, our last stop was in Athens, Greece. We stood on Mars Hill where Paul preached his message that you can find in the book of Acts, chapter 17. And and when we were standing on Mars Hill overlooking the ancient city of Athens. And we opened the Bible and we began to, to read what Paul said, because I think Paul's wisdom will help people who claim to be followers of Jesus when it comes to disagreements. Yeah, listen to what happened. Uh, this is Acts 17, verse 16. While Paul was waiting in waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So immediately, Paul was upset because of, you know, folks don't worship the way he worships. Folks don't believe what he believes. Folks don't do things when it comes to religious understanding the way Paul does. So Paul is distressed by, okay? Now, you notice Paul doesn't like go out and cuss everybody out. Paul doesn't get on social media and say, you're going to hell because of this or that. Listen to what Paul does. But verse 17 says, So he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace day by day with those who happened to be there. So he was trying to help them to understand where he was coming from. It wasn't a hateful thing. It wasn't, you know, I mean, he may have disagreed with them, but he was he was doing it in a way that would help them to want that faith that Paul professed. Yeah, because a lot of folks on social media who profess to be followers of Jesus, I think, I think are pushing people away from the faith. And j just because of some of the private messages that I'm getting of people who are like, what in the world? are Christians doing these days? Why do they have so much hate towards one another? And, and again, I'm sharing this devotion, and hopefully it will help all of us to be better followers of Jesus and to be that witness that God called us to be in 2021. 
So a group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to debate with Paul. Some of them asked, what is this babbler trying to say? Others who marked, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. And uh, they said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. And that's what Paul does. Paul would find where the folks were when it came to their religious beliefs and their faith. And he would he would meet them at that point and then he would find a way to introduce the message of Jesus. And he did it in a way that made them curious, made them want to know more. He didn't push them away. He didn't ridicule them. He didn't criticize them, you know, for what they believed. Paul tried to understand where they were and why they were um, there in that, in that place, in that situation, in that belief system. So listen to what happens. In verse 22 of Acts 17, Paul stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, people of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. Notice what he did there. He didn't say, you don't worship the way I worship, so you're going to hell. No, he didn't. He he didn't say, because I have those spiritual gifts and you don't. Well, guess what, my brother or my sister, you're not going to be in heaven with me. No, Paul didn't do that. What does he do? He says, by the way, Rocky woke up on that one. Um, He says, I see that in every way you are very religious. And so Paul, Paul begins, like I said, he begins where they are and he helps them on the journey to discover Jesus for themselves. And he says, For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. So you're ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. He's speaking to the Greeks. And he says he's not served by human hands as if he needed anything. And and so what Paul does is this God that they serve as this unknown God, he introduces God. And he introduces not just God, but God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And he uses that platform to introduce Jesus to the folks in Athens, Greece. Now, why is that important? That's important because if we study the Bible and see how Christians helped others to come to know Jesus, how Christians spread the good news of the kingdom of God, they did it by meeting people where they were. Yeah and then helping them on that journey of discovery. And I think that's what we need to do. We have social media. We have the greatest opportunity to share the love of Christ. And let me tell you something. If you profess to be a follower of Jesus, one of two things are going to happen with your social media platform. You're either going to help people to come to know Jesus or get that hunger for Jesus or depending on how we behave on social media, we may push people away from the faith. So I hope and pray that our social media platforms will be used not as not as a platform that's going to push people away. I hope it's used as a way to bring people to Jesus. Hey, this is Pastor Bill from St. Luke's United Methodist Church, Harrisville, West Virginia, Ritchie County, West Virginia. Wherever you are, I hope you're happy, I hope you're healthy, and I hope you're safe. Have a great day, everyone. Again, get outside, enjoy the sun. It's going to warm up, and it's going to be a beautiful day. And wherever you are, God bless. Take care.